Well, from enslavement to entrepreneurship, a new collection at the Newberry Library Archives, the remarkable journey of a black family with ties to Chicago. WGN's Gaynor Hall has that story. A lot of people just said, just throw it out. Patricia Olson Prescott had boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff sitting at her former house in suburban Chicago. And I grew up with my family stories. I grew up with everything my mother, my grandmother had told me and shown me and talked about. And I'm like, I can't throw this stuff out. So a few years ago, she started the process to donate it to the Newberry Library. When I saw the bulk of the material, I kind of uh, gasped a little bit. Documents, photos, letters, keepsakes, covering six generations of family history, black history, American history. I'm going photo by photo, page by page. Allison Hinderleiter is the curator carefully combing through it all. This is a picture of Harriet Tutt. She was born enslaved in Virginia in 1808. Sometime before emancipation, her family was taken to Texas. After surviving slavery, her son, E.H. Carrington, bought land and established himself as an entrepreneur. E.H. Carrington uh, owned his own grocery store in uh, Austin. He passed the store down to his son-in-law, L.D. Lyons, who married Eva Carrington. These are two interior shots of the grocery store. That is amazing. Yeah. I mean, these are really precious photographs. Here's the Lyons family in their car. They were the first black family in Austin to own one. And look at this family photo right in the middle. That's Eunice, Patricia's grandmother. She was very intelligent. Eunice moves to Chicago with her mother after her parents' divorce. She marries James Prescott, and with the skills she learned from working at Marshall Fields and watching her father and grandfather run the family store, she opens her own hat shop right here in the historic Rosenwald building on 47th Street in Bronzeville. This is an ad for Eunice Millinery from 1947. People would come in and they would talk and tell their stories and she was very good at listening. Here's a picture of Patricia's mother, Lavinia, inside the store along with a hat stretcher and some silk flowers. Also in the collection is a program from a Negro League All-Star game at Comiskey Park. We have in the back a feature about Eunice as one of the Sponsors. After her husband dies, Eunice moves to New York for a fresh start. But her entrepreneurial spirit continues to shine. She opens Ebony Paint, the first black owned paint shop in Harlem. I've just been in awe of the entire collection. Hinderleiter says family collections like this one are the backbone of the library's mission. Our mission is access. And so we just want to make sure that the material can um, can be seen and can be used in a variety of, of ways. They didn't throw out a lot of things and they kept all of these things. Patricia's grandmother and her mother have both passed on, but their stories live on, like the one about E.H. Carrington's second wife, Lavinia. She was also born into slavery. The family donated her silverware to the Smithsonian, and the story goes, Lavinia only got to meet her mother one time. She's a girl, she's told to go to this hat, she goes in and she stands in the doorway, and my, my mother always cries when she tells the story, so I know. And she says, my name is Lavinia, which one of you is my mother? And she said, a woman came and they gave a big hug. And that was it, she had to go and never saw her again. A lot of people don't want to talk about slavery. A lot of people have negative views on slavery. However, if you really think about it, we're talking about the people that survived it. So just think about what character, what strength that they had. And we need to appreciate that character and that strength and that fortitude and what they went through so that we could be here today. Tony Burroughs is the founder and CEO of the Center for Black Genealogy. He says he can't wait to take a look at the Prescott family papers. He started tracing his own family tree 50 years ago and never stopped. I like challenges. 
because doing genealogy is like solving a puzzle. It's like solving a mystery. Burroughs says you can start with documenting your own life, then go back one generation at a time. Technology has made researching a little easier. And he says for black families, the feeling of revealing a fuller picture of the past is tremendous. I am not here as an individual. I stand on the shoulders of my ancestors. I owe it to them to, to understand um, the role that they played in building America. We were all part of America, even though we might not be in the history books. By sharing a window into history through the journey of her family, Patricia Olson Prescott hopes the biggest takeaway is love. Love. It sounds very silly, but what I want them to get out of, what would be delightful for people to get out of this, is that we're all human beings and to love each other and get along with each other and we all built America. Gaynor Hall, WGN News. The message is there. Amazing. Yeah. And Newber Newberry Library archivists are still going through the Prescott's family extensive collection. Quite a collection. Appointments are required to view the materials. We do have more information on our website, WGNTV.com.